Hello everyone, MR Tech here. If you're watching this, you have probably at least once seen one of these kick-ass videos with sorting algorithm visualization, where things would be all shuffled up in the beginning, and then in some satisfying manner would get all sorted. And you probably thought to yourself, man, this is so cool, if only I could make something like this someday. Well if so, today's your lucky day, because today, you and I will make exactly that. Today's topic is bubble sort algorithm. First, we will talk about why sorting matters at all. Then, we will introduce our algorithm. And finally, we are gonna recreate one of those videos and make visualization of our algorithm using Python. Before we begin, make sure to smash that subscribe button for more videos like this. And if you like this video, please hit thumbs up to support me. Okay, let's dig into it. So, why does sorting even matter? Like, why would anyone in their right mind want their data sorted? People tell you it's easier to access data if they're sorted, but what does that even mean? Well, let's motivate this with an example. Suppose you go to the library and approach this nice lady that works there and ask her where you can find the Introduction to Algorithms book, which is awesome by the way, you should totally check it out. Miraculously, three seconds later, this lady shows you exactly where that book is. There are like 10,000 books in this place. Did she memorize the locations of all of them? I mean, how else would she find this book in such a short notice? Well, of course not. Her thought process is as follows. The non-fiction books are in the right section. And since this is computer science book, computer science department literature is in the third stack. And since the author is Corman, so it is probably somewhere in the beginning since all the books are sorted alphabetically. So this is how she finds that book so quickly. Now imagine if books in the library were without any order. So if they weren't sorted in other words. Well it would be practically impossible to find anything. The second reason is included in the first one. But it is so important that I had to separate it. That is, sorted data can be binary searched which allows you to find any element in a list in O of log n time instead of O n with classical linear search. You may think, well, big deal, who cares about that? And in the case you have a small data sample, like 10 or 100 elements, you may be just right. But suppose you have 1 billion elements in your list. Linear search would require 1 billion operations to find an element in the worst case while binary search can do the same thing in less than 40 operations. Not so insignificant anymore, is it? Ok, let's move on to the bubble sort. Bubble sort is perhaps the most basic sorting algorithm. Like if you gave a child a list of items and asked to sort them by size, it would probably perform something similar to the bubble sort on it. Bubble sort consists of iteratively and repeatedly swapping the elements that are in the wrong order until the list is sorted. We can notice that in this way the largest elements would kinda float to the end of the list, then the second largest would follow and so on, hence the name bubble sort. Ok, let's see how this works in an example. Suppose we are given this list 5, 4, 7, 3. So in the first iteration we will compare 5 and 4. Since they are clearly in the wrong orders, as 4 is smaller than 5, we swap them and we get this list 4, 5, 7, 3. Then we compare 5 and 7, they are in the right order, so we proceed. We then compare 7 and 3, they are in the wrong order, so we swap them, and we see that 7 floated to the end of the list. Now we consider this sequence of operations in the next iteration. We compare 4 and 5, they are in the right order, so we move on. We compare 5 and 3, they are in the wrong order, so we swap them. And 5 follows after 7 to the end of the list. Now we just rinse and repeat. 4 and 3 are in the wrong order, so we swap them. And you see that already after 3 iterations of what we can call the outer loop, we have our list sorted, even though the list has 4 elements. This will be important later on, when we implement the algorithm. And finally, in the last iteration we just noticed that there is nothing more to swap, so we end here. Ok, for those of you who know a thing or two about algorithms, I will just mention that this algorithm has time complexity of O of n squared, 
If you don't know what any of these words mean and you never saw this big O notation, don't worry, it's not really that important. But if you know what this means, let me just tell you that in the best case scenario, this algorithm can actually run in O of n time with just a small adjustment. Now, if you know what that adjustment is and what the best case scenario is, let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's move on to actually implementing this algorithm and making the visualization. Okay, so let's open up our favorite IDE. For the purpose of this video, I'm just using the basic idle IDE. And I have imported the necessary libraries here and created this list L that contains elements 4, 8, 12, and so on. I mean, I can print that out for you. Uh, to see. Okay, just before you begin, one more thing, make sure that you have this Pygame installed as we will need it for visualization. So if you don't have it installed, just uh, pip install Pygame. Okay, now since we don't want this list to be sorted initially, we will just perform a shuffle on this list. And now let's run this and see, okay, you see that this list is now entirely shuffled. Now for the purposes of visualization, I will define just a few um, colors. If you don't want to use the exact same colors as I'm using, that's fine, you can just Google um, orange RGB and you will get the code that you will just copy paste here as a tuple but I will just use black and yellow like that song okay this is just zero and I think that's all of them for now okay let's move on to implementing our bubble sort algorithm so we will define bubble sort on a list L and um, I will just make this nested for loop and now let's fill this in remember when I showed you this example and we had four elements in a list and I said already after three iterations we had a sorted list that's because after one iteration the lar one largest element floats to the top of the list after two iterations two of them float to the end of the list and so on and uh, if we have n elements after n minus one iterations we have n minus one elements that are in the correct place and the on the end of the list and since we have only one element that is smaller of them all we have that the list is sorted so we will have here length of l minus one okay um, here we have something similar but we will also have minus i since after i iterations of this loop i elements will be in the correct place so last i elements will be sorted so we don't need to check them we will just skip them I hope that makes sense okay here we will just do the basic thing so if l of j is greater sorry is greater than L of J plus 1 we will swap them and it is pretty cool that um, Python will allows us to do this easy swapping okay and um, believe it or not that's it we just have to return L so if we save and run and let's see L is completely shuffled and then if we perform bubble sort we see that list is sorted again now we will have something like um, visualize here but for now we don't need that as uh, we haven't defined visualization function yet so we will do that now in order to visualize it we need to define some variables first so this will be our width and the height of, of our screen and we need to actually define our screen so if you haven't done any pi game before just copy this line but basically what we're saying is display 
uh, sorry dot and we're providing it so basically I'm saying okay so the window that we will be working with is Pygame display and we will set the width and the height to be as defined here okay so now we go ahead and define this I hope this is a correct way to spell it so this will be one basic for loop that will go through all the elements in this list and we will draw a rectangle on our window that will be uh, yellow and uh, the object that we will be drawing is actually pi.rect this is a built-in pi game object for rectangle and we need to provide the coordinates of top left corner and the size so we want it let's first define the size so we want to have width to be 6 and um, height to be L of phi so basically we want to have the largest element in our list to be displayed as the highest rectangle and the okay let me just write this down and I will briefly explain okay so this is the these are the coordinates of our, of our top left corner so we want to have x coordinate to move by 6 after each rectangle is drawn since we have the width 6 so we want to have them one by one okay and the height will be well this is clear I hope we want to leave some space from above and of course the positive y-axis on the computer is pointing downwards okay do you think that this will actually work and produce what we want well only one way to find out let's run it and if we visualize L okay nothing happens why well we never actually updated our screen so what we're missing here is um, to update our screen okay let's go ahead now if we visualize it now okay we see that we got our list L so basically you can see that the first bar is really high so this corresponds to 364 pixels the second one is 24 pixels that's this one and so on now if we uncomment this and uh, run it run this bubble sort do you think that this will actually work let's see okay something it did something but something really really weird why do you think this happened well we never actually refilled our screen black so it would basically keep drawing rectangles one over another without ever refreshing our original screen so we defined this black for a reason don't worry so here before the function call we will first have a window fill black and now if we run it voila but it runs really fast so is there a way we can make it look nicer and clearer well of course that's why we implemented this time so so after every visualization we will have time dot sleep okay let's put it like point zero one and now if we want to run bubble sort voila we see that it works really nicely okay that would be it for today guys thank you for watching if you like this video make sure to hit that subscribe button stay safe and see you next time